Bon pomeriggio beautiful people, how are you? I hope you're doing well, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about glute activation because I think it's a very important topic to touch, especially because there's a lot of question whether it is useful at all, what is it for and how to do it. So I will try to do my best to synthesize all the theory I could find. So I've used all research that is publicly available and I've done my own sort of research and I've drawn my own conclusion so I will obviously reference everything I say I would reference all the studies that I will mention in the description box below but obviously absolutely make your own opinion go see those studies go read about it go on Google Scholar and research the topic and make your own conclusion because what is my understanding and what I think is the overall main goal might not be the same for you so absolutely anything I say go check it out but yeah I will go through what good activation is what is the main agreement in the science-based world or whether to do it or not or what is it for and then I will also go through a few exercises that you can do if you do decide to do some good activation exercises before your workout and so yeah I really hope it's useful I really hope you like this sort of like more science-based videos and um, it's something that I actually do for me for my workouts and for my exercises so by any means this is not just for the video is what I actually do every single time I put together a workout or every single time I want to know about exercise so I really encourage you to do the same at home and yeah I will try to make it as quick as possible and then we will go through the actual exercises so first of all what is glute activation so obviously it concerns the glutes but it's not really a well-defined or scientific term because in general terms the glute muscles are always activated unless you have some nerve problem and you cannot move the muscle in general terms it is always activated so what is this meant by glute activation and by glute activation exercises it's all to do with basically making sure that the fibers of the glute muscles are um, ready to go whenever you do your leg exercises so that is called motor recruitment so in terms of improving it um, then it also has to do with also improving and augmenting the temperature of the muscle itself so the same as you do a warm-up when you do some cardio to overall augment the temperature of your body that is exactly that but more focused on obviously the glute muscles and finally what is meant for glute activation is also to improve the electrical activity in the muscle so all of this give a little bit of a more complete picture of what is meant by glute activation so i just wanted to make clear that by any means i don't mean glute activation as equal to or a substitute to doing some cardio before a gym workout i think Cardio has to be done, absolutely, and it has so many benefits of doing a little bit of cardio and warming up your body before doing any sort of exercise, any sort of workout session. So by any means, that is not what it's meant. And also I wanted to make sure to make clear that glute activation is not equal to or a substitute of um, pyramid load. So for example, when you do a compound movement, so for example, a squat, or deadlifts because of the movement not only targeting one muscle but being a compound so it targets your back your legs and all of that it is very important to basically pyramid load to whichever weight you're working so that means that you do first loads of reps with really low weight or just body weight and you start doing for example some squats then you load up the weight a little bit more and you reduce the amount of reps for the next set so you again you do that and you work your way to where you were supposed to do your squats so if you meant to do five sets of 70 kilos then you work your way there as opposed to just you know having done your cardio session and you just straight ahead go and squat 70 kilos that is absolutely dangerous in terms of injury and all of that so yeah i just wanted to make sure that glute activation is not the same as a warm-up and is not the same as a pyramid load so i would say then as a definition of glute activation is any movement that is specifically and mainly focused on the glutes that carries out less weight and more reps as a way to prepare the glutes before the workout that is about to come but without overstraining them so without starting your workout session being really tired and not be able to do as much as you could have done 
if you didn't do this exercise before. So of all the research, the main idea is that glute activation does not improve your performance. So for example, there is this study about Coach Ryan et al, I hope I didn't butcher the name, where they took 24 semi-professional rugby players, they randomly divided it into groups, and over six weeks they did exactly the same training except that one group uh, did some glute activation exercises before the training. And what they found is that there is no significant difference after those six weeks in terms of their performance. So here I think that the main takeaways are not that, you know, glute activation doesn't work and that's it, I shouldn't spend my time on it, but rather why do you do it? So yes, of course, if your main goal or the reason why you do glute activation is to lift more weight, obviously the scientific evidence does not confirm that, does not sustain that. You're not going to do some good activation and suddenly instead of lifting, I don't know, 70 kilos, you're able to lift 150. That's not the point. So I think the most important thing to think about why doing good activation has more to do with the efficiency to which you do the exercise afterwards. Just because it sort of allows you to have a better mind-muscle connection. And by this, I mean that, yes, of course, glute activation doesn't necessarily improve performance, but because it allows you to have that initial muscle soreness before doing the exercises, it really, really does help in terms of really physically and mentally locating the muscle, feeling it work while you do a movement, ensuring that you're squeezing it, ensuring that whatever you're doing, whether it's a squat, a hip thrust or whatever else, you can actually target your concentration and you can target your focus upon that muscle because then you can actually feel it. So for example, for me, for many years, I could literally not feel or have control over my left cheek. I just, it didn't matter how I would place my feet, if I would put my weight on my heels, if I would go with shoes or different type of shoes or without any shoes, um, whether I would change my form, whether I would do cardio before, whether I would do single leg exercises or two legs exercises, or I would first do the left side or first the right side, it did not matter. Whenever I was doing, for example, some like a hip thrust, I could squeeze my left cheek. I would physically know that I was targeting all the movements from the contraction of my right glutes. And then when I would do the same exercise on the other side, I could feel nothing. I would feel more on my quads or on my knees or my lower back as opposed to my left cheek. So I think it's really important in that sense. I think that glute activation is a really good tool to use to not only, as I said, increase the temperature of the muscles, to prepare them uh, for the workouts that's about to come, to have a better motor unit recruitment of the muscle fibers, but most importantly, to mentally prepare yourself, to have all the tools, to have all the preparation that you need in order to have the most effective workout and not lose time thinking, oh, I cannot feel it, oh, this is useless. But I also want to make sure that it's clear that um, by muscle soreness, I don't mean that when you finish your session, you cannot move and that's an indicator that you worked well. Especially if you have been lifting or doing whatever amount of exercise for a few years, the recovery, the muscle recovery is way quicker, so there is no such a thing as feeling sore and achy and not be able to move for two days. Um, in that sense, that feeling is not an indicator that your workout worked, um, but rather that your muscles are less used to that movement. So whoever is a beginner, or if you had had a time off and then you're going back to the gym, that's where probably you will have muscle soreness when you go back home, but that's completely different to having a effective workout or having that initial muscle soreness due to the glute activation that then will just simply be a tool to use to really ensure that whatever movement you're doing, you're really using your glutes because it's gonna hurt a little bit more. And that's completely different to not be able to move afterwards because I've been training basically every week solid for the past four years and before the pandemic and before the quarantine, I could have the most hard and effective workout and I would be fine, I wouldn't feel any soreness afterwards. So I think the main takeout for me is the fact that 
glute activation is something that will prepare my body but more importantly it will prepare me mentally to do the workout and because it takes around 10 minutes to warm up any sort of body part I would say to do your cardio if you have more time do yes 15 20 minutes of cardio if you are a little bit more strict on time then do around 5 to 10 minutes then I will do around the five minutes glute activation if I'm doing a leg day or if I really want to work out my glutes again just to prepare myself and just to ensure that I won't lose time trying to feel my left cheek and then I will just go ahead and do my workout bearing in mind that whatever I did before does not put a strain on me and on my body in order to do a good workout afterwards. So having said that, I think before telling you all the exercises that I personally would do, I think it's important to divide the muscle in itself. So in case you didn't know, the glutes are formed by the gluteus maximus, which are the most obvious and the ones that you can you know, more easily see from an exterior physical point. And what they function is to extend the hip also it is useful for a hip external rotation and overall is the muscle that is more easy or allegedly easy to target. And we have the gluteus medius which are again slightly on, a bit on the side and they are literally the ones that you use to do hip abductions and they also give your hips and overall stability so that's what they are for and then finally the tiniest one is the gluteus minimus which are smaller and way more deeper underneath so behind the gluteus medius and maximus and what they do is that they give the overall joint stability so having said that the exercises that I would recommend in general are for example starting with a banded squat with your toes pointing outwards and the band around your knees and that will really simulate that compound movement of the squat and sort of give also the overall muscle a chance to activate better and it's a basic fundamental movement to then transition to the other exercises then as a second exercise what I would do is any sort of hip abduction now this could be again with a band around your knees in the hip thrust position it could be again with a band around your knees in the glute bridge position or it could be standing up so if you do side walks with a band that is a good hip abduction if you are at the gym again you could use the machine as long as you keep the weight low and you try to do high reps and then thirdly I would do also some hip thrusts which have been shown to be more efficient and effective at targeting the glutes than for example squats so I think that's something to bear in mind even later on when you do the exercises and the actual workout so in terms of hip thrusts it could be again in the typical hip thrust position or you could do it with a slightly smaller range in a glute bridge and finally i would also make sure to do some kickbacks now you can do them standing up or when you're kneeling down and i think that really really allows that focus on the gluteus maximus so that's it for me i hope this video was useful and easy to digest and as well as informative i will put a suggested glute activation circuit in the description down below to sh show you just what i do but again you could do any of these exercises i mentioned before and what i would suggest to do is maintain a high rep range so anywhere between 20 to 30 reps with a really low weight or a resistance band or even body weight and i would personally do them once just one after the other and that's it i wouldn't do any sets or anything like that but again this is my takeaway i will make sure to link everything down below so that you can draw your own conclusion and obviously you can go and find even more sources of information and please let me know if you have any suggestions if there is anything else that you would like me to explain and maybe do another more science-based video about it i would really be happy to solve any doubts you have to the best of my abilities and also if you tried this good activation circuit i suggested then please let me know how it went to give me some feedback because i would love to know about your experience doing it and yeah, this is everything for me and hopefully we'll see you next time. Ciao!